Right, uh, good evening folks. Uh, today I'm just going to be writing a bit of code for, well, basically for you to learn by example, because personally I don't think that running through a tutorial where you have, say, you know, 10, 15, 20 videos and each one's just on a se separate topic on, on the language and each one's six minutes long, I personally don't think that's a very useful way to learn. So instead I am going to just solve an example problem in this case, tic-tac-toe, because it's a basic problem. I had to solve it at university, which I thought was quite easy. Um, I've seen someone else has done a YouTube video in Common Lisp solving tic-tac-toe. However, personally, I don't think his solution, although I, I assume it was not an optimal solution, uh, really demonstrates what you can actually do with this language. So I'm going to make a very basic uh, solution that will uh, immediately have flaws. And, I suppose in another video we can come back and improve on it. Maybe we can add like the condition system, we can add classes or whatever. So I'm just gonna make it pretty clear from the get-go that uh, I have actually written the code already and I will be referencing the code that I've written because uh, some things like format, the, the function format are actually quite complicated and you can sit there and uh, well, you can basically screw up the, the format string and you sit there like, oh, why isn't it working? Um, I don't really see the point in uh, doing that a hundred times. So anyway, if we want to, the problem in tic-tac-toe is, you know, you have one player plays X and someone plays O and whoever gets three in a row wins. If no one wins, if uh, no one gets three in a row, then no one wins. So we will just quickly run through that. So what's the first thing we need? We need a board. We're going to have a board. We're going to make our board with lists because uh, LISP stands for list processing. So we will use lists. Uh, oopsie, we're just gonna have three. Now we have our board. Now, what's the first thing we wanna do? We probably want to display our board. So we'll have our rows. Now this is straight off the bat, one of the reasons I uh, wrote down the code I was using first because you're going to see the format string I'm about to use and uh, it's not an easy format string and so there's a very good reason for copying it although I did uh, you know I did take the t time to figure it out so you can't trust me that I didn't just copy it from somewhere although even if I did who cares um right so let me show you what that does when I have fixed what I have broken which is missing a tilde there All right let's let's write display board default display board and then just take board as an argument and then we're gonna use map C because so map car loops over the, the uh, like first element or the uh, cars of a list and then uh, looping over in this case is going to be three lists so if we do if we were to do something like map car print and then board it just loops over three times but the thing about map car is it also collects the results of executing this function on it but map c just returns the initial result the initial uh, sequences so we don't want to accumulate any results. That's why we're using map C because we're printing to a, uh, a stream. Our result gets accumulated in the stream. So if we do this, uh, so now you can see our board is like that. So we need to, what do we need to do? We need to know how to add a uh, player's position to the board. So, uh, add pause, uh, board, uh, add user move or something. Uh, board, pause, and in this case, we'll have like pause will look something like this, x, y, something like that. So, we'll destructure using destructuring bind. We're going to destructure pause to have x and y, pause, and then we'll do set f elt sequence elt 
board and the index y in this case then x oh hello what did i do wrong board is defined but never used what oh oops i forgot to accept player Didn't have to compile the entire program to figure that one out, did I? But we also want this for define get board position board pause uh, destructure pause get rid of this. So we're just receiving the x and y value from within this list up here. Uh, well, actually, you know, let's make a macro quickly. And all it does is this. Uh, destructure, pause. And what does it do? It just destructures, pause, and then executes body. Pause locally. Now, locally is like progon, returns the last value in or the last uh, value within the body that's executed however it allows you to um, uh, use declare you know like declare optimize or whatever or declare um, however in this case we're also binding x and y in body so destructures pause list pause provides two variables x and, oh, and y within body there you go uh, when I get it right and I know what I've got done wrong missed that oops oops so now if we expand this, uh, you can see that it's just expanding out to uh, destructuring bind, which we had, which you saw previously. If you don't know what this does, this is basically this uh, back quote is telling it that this we want to produce code here. We don't want to evaluate it immediately. We want code uh, basically for it to produce code, and then we have pause here, it's saying evaluate it to the value of pause when it's passed in. And then this is doing some crazy stuff. Basically, if it's a list, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. But it's like if it was a list like A, B, C, D, E, F. At the end of it, it would just become A, B, C, D, E, F without the list. Something like that. It's just it's just the way to do things, right? <laughs> Might not be able to explain it very well in this case. Maybe I'll do a specific video on it. Yeah, my coke. Um, so we know how to uh, add a user at user move. Board pause zero zero. Ooh, that means player X. And if we get board position, board zero zero. If we display board board. You can see right so that's uh that's the very basic fundamentals we know how to place on the board get board positions however what's the most annoying part with this problem is solving the uh win conditions because you have something like nine or uh, you have vertical not three in a row vertical 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 horizontal 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 and then two diagonals. And uh, this is where my contention with the other guy's uh, code comes, is that he wrote basically every win condition out manually instead of just iterating through the list. So what we're going to do is uh, check for win conditions by, by uh, we're gonna check for a win condition by Splitting by returning each individual part of the uh, board and uh, checking if it's all 
one player. So you'll have all player P, and you know you add the P because it's common lisp and that tells you it's a predicate, so either returns t nil or uh, something that's equal to T or equivalent to T. So we have a row and then the player. And we use every lambda le and then we do string equal le. Actually, if we do player string equal, string hyphen equal is case insensitive. Um, and now let's get all the vertical rows. I am certainly referring back so loop for row in board collect so now we are collecting all of the vertical rows Ooh within the board, vertical rows, board, it's just a list of three, but obviously now instead of running one, two, three, it's running one, two, three. Um, but we also need to get uh, the diagonal rows. Uh, to do that, we have to run one, two, one, one, ooh, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's two rows like that. So let's uh, get that diagonal rows board. We need to make a list because we are mapping over everything. I'm going to start at negative one. Loop for row in board. Collect ELT row. Now this one we're doing it in reverse, so we start from the other way and we do deck f instead. And that should, it's a bit hard to actually uh, demonstrate without, ooh, there's a mistake in here. Uh, because we have own, oh no, no, it's not a mistake, it's, uh, it's perfectly fine. If we modify, say this, make that one, two, it makes it a bit easier to see because now you can see it's done this. If we just put, cool, oops, T L top left, T R top right, top left, top right, you can see. Um, Nil, nil. Now, if I just do vertical rows again, TL, yeah, then 2, 1, yep, yep, yep. You can see I'll just reset this back. Uh, so that grabs our vertical, our uh, diagonal rows, that grabs our vertical rows. Now, to check for a win condition with uh, uh, on a single row, is we need to do, we need to just check that. Um, uh, any of the values. So if we have a loop, if we are no, we have three rows. We've got all our, we've got all our but um, horizontal rows here. If any of them return uh, a single t value to all player p, we know that uh, the user has won. So on uh, all win row, we need a row, and we need the player to check if they have won, and then we're going to use sum with the predicate identity now identity I only learned about this yesterday just returns back what's given but the thing is in common lisp everything that isn't nil is, is is a true value I mean it's effectively true so in this case we can do that we just do lambda then ooh, that should be rows uh, all player P row player and then rows now so what this is doing is we're handing in a list of rows like this and it's going to go through each one and it's going to check if any of so here it's going to map through each of these and it's going to say oh is any of these all player P 
if any in all of them are they all t uh, the same character so they all x and they all y or whatever um or zero sorry <laughs> and then uh then that's going to return a new list or three new a uh, new list and then we're going to go through that new list and uh check if any of them return t because if any of them return t we know that row has won so if we want to check for uh a win condition we just do board player and then we do or win condition board player that's the horizontal because uh, in this case it's just going to loop through these three oh it's or yeah recurse through them uh, now we need diagonal board player Mm, vertical now oh when condition row uh, that's meant to be vertical rows right so now if we go here we just change all three of those to X X and X we do win condition board x we get t if i return that change it to o get nil because it's not true if we return them all back to nil and then make i don't know make this one x this one x this one x to a win condition you see that they've won let's return those back to nil now now we've done that uh so what do we need to do now when the player is playing and it, they're asked their turn we need to make sure that uh that they don't place their that yeah that they don't place <coughs> in a position that's already taken so let's do D fun, uh, we'll just call it uh, place taken P, board pause, we will destruct, no, 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 we do, um, just do, we will do, and, no, 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 we will just do get board position, board pods and now if return because our board starts at a default of nil if there's nothing there it will return nil if it's if there's something there it will just return that character in its place which is perfectly fine okay we're not returning we're not explicitly returning t or no we're just returning a truthy value um let me see so next we need to make sure that what a user enters is valid so in this case you can only enter either x or o and it can only be in the positions 0 1 2 on both the x and y axis so we're going to do validate or valid uh, Look at me referring back valid user input p. Nah, we'll just uh, uh, yeah. Actually, we're not going to make it predicate. We're going to do validate, and we're going to double it up. Just pause. Handle a case, which is like um, try and catch. Uh, pause. We're going to convert them into strings what am i doing i can just map car pass integer pause so now it's going to pass over so first we need to check that pause equal pause Oop. length pause is two because there can only be the user's only entering two arguments uh, the x and y and then we have to just make sure well, let's uh, do our destructure. P 
pause here pause and then make sure that uh, ooh, both X and Y are between two um, ooh. final thing will return is pause otherwise it will return nil and we're gonna catch every so here we're going to catch any object returned that's of type condition any condition this is the this is the parent i believe it's the highest maybe not of uh all the condition objects so if i was to do like uh, error uh abc you know you have as a, of type simple error but that will get caught by condition so that's being caught. Um, uh, what do we do? So that validates the user input. Why don't we just check it? Uh, A, that's going to crash. Oh, I didn't. Uh, nil. But if we do one, oh, one, and two, then it's fine. And it also returns a past version. So what do we have to do? Uh, we have to also flip players. Opposite player player if string equal player to x then return o otherwise return x which just flips the players and we need to receive the player's input so Well, we're going to produce a format to the stream called query io because it's for querying input and output so it's this person's turn uh, enter an x and a y and we need a little space on the end and the player and then we do read line actually we're going to use a library called string and that's only so we can split the uh, so we can split what is received from the user into a list so basically string split space a b c just returns a list like that and uh, emit nulls means that if you have multiple spaces like Oh, hello. Like here, if we do that, it adds a bunch of empty spaces in. But if you add emit nulls t, it just gets rid of them. So that's how we get the position from the player. Now, finally, we want to play. I mean, one thing we haven't checked for is the board being full. But uh, we can do that in a second. So let's play tick tack toe. We're going to start, choose a board. Let's actually make sure our board is clear. Okay, good. Now, we're going to start with some anonymous or lexically binded or lexically bound functions because we're going to rely on recursion to do this. We display the board first, very first thing. And we're going to get the input, uh, which is get user. Uh, which will be get user input yeah it'll make sense in a second don't worry um, and then we'll place that on the board wait what did I call it I called it add user move boom add Use a move board pause uh, pause player. Now we do if win condition board player. Ah, let's have a function for displaying a win message. Define name display win message. 
player format standard out congratulations a you win so the uh, tilde a just prints the object oops And otherwise we want to play again, but we need to have the opposite player, player. So if it's X, it'll become O. Um, but we also need another local function, which was add, which was get user input, which handles grabbing the user input, let input, what I, I called it validate user input and then pause is from pause from player uh, if IP then oh yeah good point if and IP and not place taken P glad I didn't forget that board IP then return input Otherwise, we will return format t place already taken. Try again with the new line. And we will call get user input with player once again. And now we just play and we start with x. And uh, we use board. Oops, call with zero arguments. Oops, play. Player, board. Let's play win. Oop. Cat. Board. Pause from player. Player. Right, let's see if that works. I'd be surprised if it does, but let's try it. Board. Now this has obviously got some problems. X is turn, enter an X and a Y. Zero, zero. A hundred, a hundred. Place already taken. It's one of the problems. We will, I will make another video where I, you know, make things a lot more. Where I make things some more. I know you provide like decent error output because what could be possible here is, you know, we know it's the wrong length. We know if they've entered the values incorrectly. We also know if the place is taken. So there's no point. Uh, I guess we can always just change this to error in input. Try again. I mean, it's more general if we do. Oh, no. Why is it? Li uh, look at it. Oh, it's changed. <laughs> um, uh so yeah we can do zero one wait we're trying to get x to win so one 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 zero uh let's do zero one Ooh. Zero, oh, zero two hopefully i didn't okay that's good now if we want x to win we need zero two. Oh no 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 what do we need we need three zero oops two zero Minor problem there. <laughs> uh, I put board display when that's meant to be player. But yeah, you can see it mostly works. Yeah, there's a few things that could be better, like the fact that now we already have a board that's already working because we haven't, say, jammed the board in a class. We could have used a board as a class. We could have made each one of these a row and then used uh, object orientation instead. But uh, this is sort of just like a, um, a version of, just very basic version, of a basic way of solving tic-tac-toe. How would we check if the board is taken up? Um, we could run through and make sure that none of the values on any of the rows are nil. If none of the values are nil, then we know the uh, we know the board is taken up and there's uh, there's no way for uh, 
the users, either of the users to win. We could just be like, sorry, no one wins. But uh, that's literally just copying this with player being nil. Because you can do string uh, equal nil, nil, I believe, because they're both symbols, right? So you literally, for a board to be full, it's the same here where player is nil. On, and you only have to do it on this. Actually, why don't we do it? Define board full p board. We just use win condition board player is nil. Uh, player is. That's not going to work because it's checking for. We need the opposite. We need something like this. We'll just do row full p. And if it is uh, sum, do not sum, oops, what did I just do? Sum null. I think there's a not any, so we don't want any of them to be null on row and that will so if we reset the board we go to board and we grab this one and we do row full p should return nil but if we were to do row full p t t t it's full but if we add nil it's null so you can at the end here uh, display board you can do if if uh, oh actually we need to change it where's win condition right right do you farm board oh I already wrote it already wrote it map C sum identity map car row full P board I'll just map over board and then if any of them are nil, it will return T. So if board full P board, then we can do format T game over O1 wins with a space. And then otherwise we do all of this. And that, oh, what did I break? All oh, right, okay need that that's fine um that should sort that out uh now i'm not going to test that because it's going to take ages but that checks for the win condition the uh board fall condition hopefully that uh is of use i mean obviously if you were to do this properly really properly but uh, i'm you know i don't want a three-hour video on solving tic-tac-toe you should add all your doc strings as well for all your functions.